Um, it's astonishing the way it's been suppressed and kept out of consciousness. It turns out it's actually um, a, a phenomenon that some people know a great deal about. I've carried out extensive interviews with surveillance officers who are paid to look at other people on a daily basis. This is their job. And most of them are convinced people really can tell when they're being stared at. Store detectives, for example, say that if you look at somebody you think might be a shoplifter, if you, if you look at them at, at all intensively, they're very likely to turn around and see you. Private detectives, uh, when they're trained how to follow people, are trained that you don't stare at the back of the person you're following because the chances are they'll turn around, catch your eye, and blow your covers blown. Um, SAS <laughs> troops, when they're being trained in the SAS to, cl to creep up behind people and stab them in the back, um, are told not to stare at the person's back when they're doing that because they're likely to turn around and shoot them first. So these things are well known uh, within the security world, the surveillance world, to police officers, to anti-terrorist squads, and to soldiers. Um, they're also well known in the martial arts, and in many martial arts traditions, uh, they train people in sensitivity to being looked at from behind. You can actually improve this sensitivity. And it's very important in the martial arts if someone's creeping up to attack you from behind. If you can sense that, you're obviously at an advantage. Um, but then, how do you test it scientifically? Well, it turns out it's very simple to test it scientifically. I've developed a very simple experiment, so simple a child can do it. And in fact, thousands of children already have done it. Um, and how it works is this. Um, you need two pieces of apparatus. You need a blindfold. And I use these airline blindfolds. Um, um, so you, people work in pairs. The subject wears the blindfold. Um, that cuts out peripheral vision and gives a mild form of sensory deprivation. The, the person behind them um, either stares at the back of their neck or looks away and thinks of something else in a random series of trials. You can get the randomness through tossing a coin, heads meaning look, tails meaning don't look, or you can do it with random number tables. Um, and all of the instructions are on my website. Uh, for anyone who's interested in doing it. It works very well with classes of children. It's been done in primary schools and secondary schools very extensively in Britain, Germany, and America. Anyway, you're sitting there as the subject. You've got the blindfold on. The signal for the beginning of a trial is given with a standard click. So you hear the click. You know the trial's begun. The person behind you is either looking at the back of your neck or looking away and thinking of something else. And you have to guess. I guess I'm being looked at. Um, <laughs> I'm, well, so you know, usually uh, people do best if they guess quickly, within five seconds or so. Um, the more you think about it, the less well you do. The, the, the mind, the, the thought processes in the mind interfere with this. It's a basic sensory ability. Um, in these tests... Um, just taking anybody, if we did it in this room today in, with pairs of people, I could predict pretty precisely what the result would be. Unless this is a very unusual group, well, probably it is, but unless it's very, very unusual, what would happen is that in the looking trials, uh, about 60% of the guesses would be correct compared with 50% expected by chance. And this is a very consistent pattern we get over and over again. Um, this... Um, becomes very significant statistically when you have thousands and thousands of trials, uh, which there have in fact been. This has also been uh, running for the last six years in the Science Museum in Amsterdam. One of the most popular exhibits there is um, this, a computerized version of this experiment, which 19,000 people have done now. And the overall results are astronomically significant statistically. This seems to be a real phenomenon. There's now a very large weight of evidence that this is indeed for real. Um, so the sense of being stared at really does seem to happen. Oddly enough, it even happens through closed-circuit television, uh, where people are not stared at directly, but only their image on a TV screen is stared at. This is something that's well known to uh, people in the security industry. I've, uh, as you probably know, there are thousands, millions actually, of closed-circuit television cameras 
In Britain, we have more per capita than anywhere else in the world. They're in shopping centers, streets, uh, office blocks, hospitals, and so forth. Um, and uh, there are people paid to look at people through these uh, devices. But actually, most of the time, they're not looking at people. When I've been into security booths to interview security officers, I found that mostly they, they spend their time drinking tea and reading the sun. Um, <laughs> but um, sometimes they are actually looking at people. And in some store detectives have told me that uh, they're convinced uh, people can tell when they're being looked at through closed circuit tele television, especially if they're security conscious, which smugglers at Heathrow are, uh, shoplifters are, and so on. Um, most people don't bother. They're not very sensitive. But um, some people are very sensitive. And um, people who look at them through closed circuit television are convinced they really can tell when they're being looked at. This has actually been put to the test in a series of experiments that have been done in a number of universities in Britain and elsewhere. Um, in these laboratory experiments, um, the, the subject doesn't have to guess when they're being looked at consciously. What happens is they have electrodes on their fingers to measure their skin resistance. This is like a lie detector test. If you're emotionally aroused, they, you, sweat, you sweat, and it changes the skin resistance. So this is a very sensitive measure of a, a, emotional arousal. So somebody just sits in a room, there's a TV camera pointing at them. Um, in another room, somebody either looks at their image on a computer, on a TV screen or not. And interestingly, people's skin resistance changes significantly when they're being looked at compared with when they're not. This has now been replicated um, in laboratories uh, in various parts of the world. It seems to be a pretty robust result. No one's yet done this live on TV, and that's the next stage, and I'm trying to arrange that. Imagine the experiment where you could have four presenters, say, in a four well-known personalities in a studio. Um, each could have a camera pointing at them running continuously. And then you'd have a switch in, uh, in the control booth where you'd show an image of one of these people selected at random to millions of viewers, and nobody would look at the others at all. At the end of each five-second trial, each of them would have to guess if they were being looked at by millions of people or not. They'd be right or wrong. And in a few minutes, you could build up enough trials to get a statistically significant result one way or the other, if they can tell or if they can't tell when they're being looked at. I think it's very likely it would work. If people can tell when one person's looking at them on a closed-circuit television, it might be much easier to tell if millions are looking at them on real television. And this would have enormous implications for mass media and mass entertainment. It would mean that people who are, as we say, are in the public eye may be affected by that in a way they don't normally expect. Um, normally, the idea is that every, everything goes out through television, nothing comes back. But if something's coming back, if people are affected by being seen by lots of people, this would be a very, very interesting thing indeed. And if it worked on one TV show, I'm quite sure that TV companies all around the world would want to replicate it because it would be fascinating for everybody. And this would give instant science on an unprecedentedly large scale. If this worked, and it worked repeatedly, the question of does the sense of being stared at exist would cease to be a question. It would be everybody would have seen demonstrations of its power on the mass media and being part of the experiment, not just seeing the experiment, being part of it through looking at the person on television. Anyway, that hasn't happened yet, but it could happen. And if it does and if it works, it could dramatically shift the um, climate of thought about these phenomena. Well, dogs, cats, and other animals also seem sensitive to being looked at. It's not just confined to people. Many people have found that they can wake sleeping dogs or cats by staring at them. Some have found that dogs and cats can wake them when they're asleep by staring at them. Um, and hunters and wildlife photographers have often found that wild animals can tell when they're being looked at, even if they're looked at through a telescopic lens or through a telescope or binoculars uh, from somebody who's hidden in a hide um, who can't, the animals can't see. They somehow feel when they're being looked at, even at a distance. I think, in fact, the sense of being stared at is a very fundamental biological ability, and I think it probably evolved a very long time ago, and is probably uh, most important in predator-prey contexts. If prey animals can tell when predators are looking at them, and 
and escape, then they'd obviously survive better than if they couldn't tell. There'd be a strong natural selection working in favor of this sensitivity. And I think the fact it exists in the modern world, even though it's no part of the educational system, it's never mentioned or discussed, yet everyone knows about it, um, the fact it still exists despite all discouragement, um, uh, the fact it's still so common um, is because it's deeply embedded in our biological nature.